Hello everybody, joining this live Q&A session. So just make sure you, if you want to call through, but Matt White's got a great question. Do you have any retaining wall membranes that can be sprayed? Matt, we do. And what we do in that situation is we have membranes, even like our grips at 38 or our P39, that can be sprayed onto walls. It's all in the spray equipment. If you own the spray game and you've got um, equipment, airless spray systems, we have used all the major brands before. It all comes down to the filter and the tip size, which we can give you those details through our tech department. But you can use those products, and if they are underground, they will be uh, safe to use and will remain stable in that environment. Still need to use a protection system on top. But yeah, most definitely, if you'd like to, no more, please uh, get hold of our tech department and we can give you the specification for that. So for those of you who are joining us now, late on the piece, just mentioned that you have the ability to call through a live question today and I'll answer them. I've got a few that have come through, as I said. However, anyone who's confident enough or would like to get involved on our live Q&A, anyone who rings through will get and not anyone, sorry, the best question that comes through, I'll select the best question through, get a vest sent to you at your size, which is valued $110. So, yeah, please call us through if you like. Matt, I hope that answered your question. If you've got any others, let us know. Uh, one of the questions that came through from Ben, what should, be looking, what should we look for before waterproofing over existing membranes? This one comes up at times. Our piece is there should be only a couple of reasons why you would ever go over an existing membrane. Normally you're going to want to um, actually remove, no problem Matt, normally you're going to want to m remove uh, those membranes first and start afresh because you're always going to be at the mercy of what is down there. There's only a couple of situations where we find that might be the case. It could be uh, an exposed roof area where it is just too much damage that, to remove that membrane as such. We do have preparation systems, but um, there's really, you've really got to be careful because it's hard to warrant that, and we need to assess the condition of that membrane before you start going over an existing one. So yeah, um, but if you are ever going to look at that, unless it is very sound and stable, then there's absolutely no entertaining the question about it because there's more risk than, than gain, for sure. Um, we had a question come through about water tanks. And as you know, many of you know that we've got um, a number of our products in our range that are approved for potable water, for drinking water, human consumption. Our C1P, our Gripset 2P, our Gripset 11 YDM, and also, hey Walter, uh, guys, have we got a few more join us inside out, construction coatings, how are you going? Um, and also our E60. Now, there's only a standard for human drink water consumption. There's not one for um, animals. So you can only, we, we have this a lot with landscape architects that come and ask us these questions. Um, and in that situation there, particularly for things like fish ponds, as I said, there's no standard for that. So we only recommend always the products that are safe for human consumption. But, you know, this comes up particularly with rural areas where you might have um, stock feed with, with animals that are part of um, a big big product uh, usage for the farm and so what's important there is that you should use a potable water membrane so yeah, any of those products will be safe to drink from uh, it depends on the substrate and the conditions you're applying it to but as I said E60, C1P, 2P and the 11 YDM are all approved if you need more details on that we can help you with specs. Those of you that come on late in the piece the best question that gets phoned in gets a vest. Grip set vest sent out to you, valued $110, and not many people get these. Remember this, guys. Um, if you do want to do that and you don't want to give us your number, please um, just DM, out, DM your, your phone number on either our Facebook or Instagram. I will call you on this number, no one will know your number, and we'll chat live and have a chat about your question. So get out there and give it a try. Um, we had one question about Gripset 51 that came through, about whether you can paint or top coat over it, um, where someone has incorrectly applied the Gripset 51 to a surface or for an application where it shouldn't have been applied. Look, um, 
as you know, all of you that have known the Grips of 51 product, with Bitchman products, we have a situation where uh, you have got to ensure that even though Grips of 51 is non-toxic and doesn't bleed, the softening point of Bitchman's are the issue with coatings on top. So it's not the fact that you can't adhere paint to it or a texture, for example, but it's the softening point of the bitumen below because when any temperature change, particularly with warmer weather, you get a softening of that and that can compromise the finish. So in that situation, if you have done that, we always would prefer that you remove it, but if you can't, you can use the Gripset 11Y slurry over the top of the uh, Gripset 51 and then go ahead and put your other coating on top of that. Um, but if it's a real thick, rich bed, you want to remove as much as possible because it's not the actual fact that you can't bond to it, but it's the softening point of the bitumen that can be the issue. We had another question um, about which of our products are suitable for foot traffic, which membranes are suitable for foot traffic. If you are doing an application where you need to have foot traffic on top of it, and it is a, um, for, for example, exposed area, we don't use any of our trafficable membranes as the sole membrane system because you'll find over, over time these products will get damaged or worn. So we use them as what we call a sacrificial system in the event that ever happens. So we put our membranes underneath that first and that could be the GC or it could be the Grips F38, it could be a number of our systems, even the P39 for that matter. And then we've got a non-slip coating on top, which is our Gripset LS roof coat. For those of you who have used that before, non-slip meets all the standards with the, for the non-slip rating, and that goes directly over those membranes. That can be left exposed to UV, and if there's, and, and that's pretty hard to damage that product, but it's never as elastomeric or as flexible as those other products. Um, and hence, you can put that on top of a system like the GC or the 38 or the P39, and you still detail the elasto, that's the UV coating on top, non-slip, and, and away you go. We do have one more traffic membrane in our range, which is more for, uh, not for um, roof coatings, but more for our ground floors, which is our P17. And the advantage of the P17 is our polyurethane. It's got outstanding, not, a, not only outstanding UV resistance, but outstanding fuel resistance. So we can use that, we use it a lot on asphalt surfaces, and it can handle traffic, vehicle traffic as well but very durable for foot traffic. And that also has a non-slip uh, rating to it as well. So they are options. If you are thinking of the P17 for an application and you're not certain, check out the data sheet first because there is a difference between that and the LS roof coat. And secondly, if you're not 100% certain on it, get hold of our tech services department. Those that are late coming in, again, if you'd like to call in a question, I'll take your call, DM us on Facebook or Instagram. I'll dial your number, no one will know your number, and then we go from there. Um, got another question out of New South Wales from Matt. Having trouble in cold climate in southern New South Wales, what do you guys recommend for internal wet areas? Good question, Matt. Um, so look, obviously we get our grips at 38 FC, and actually you have baited me up for a new one that I'm going to be. Able to, I was going to announce at the end of the session, but I'll, I'll talk about it now. But we do have um, our grips at 38 FC or our grips at 2P. The Gripset 2P will always dry because you've got that reaction between the polymer and the powder and the hydration process. The Gripset 38FC obviously is our fast curing system. The reality is when you're in the road of those cold conditions, southern New South Wales and familiar with those places, particularly like Canberra at the moment, um, you're going to have situations where even though you've got a fast cure product, it's going to take longer than in normal ambient conditions and whether you've got humidity or the real cold but it will dry faster than normal. You need to be aware of things like the substrate. You know, if you're going over something like Skyon versus concrete, then you can always rely on the concrete to, for the membrane to dry a little bit quicker because of the absorption process. Whereas with Skyon, you can only allow it to cure through evaporation and because and, uh, there's no absorption to the Skyon surface. So they're the two options at the moment. However, next month, you need to stay tuned for a very big announcement because we will have something that's going to be brought to market that we're going to offer that goes to another level. And that's the only tease I'm going to give you today, guys. But please stay tuned on that one because if you're talking about disruption in the market, 
The next 18 months, Group Set is going to play its part on changing the industry in many, many ways. And that product there that we're going to be bringing out is one to stay tuned in for. So, Matt, um, if you've got any questions on that any further, please come back to us. I hope that helped. But at the moment, that is your best app option. Aqua Armor. Thanks, guys. What happened to the GC? My clear. What happened to the GC3 for underground tanking? Great question. Great question. Um, with the GC3, we pulled back on that for the underground tanking because even though we had something that was going to work price-wise and functionality, we weren't happy with one of the functions of it right towards um, some of the applications we had. So we are still going to be bringing a GC3 version out for that but it's still being worked on and there's a few other priorities we've got at the moment. So we've held back on that. So hopefully we haven't put you out too much on that aqua armor. But at the moment, if you wanted to use a GC system for underground, you can use the GC2 uh, in that application and we've got uh, just a slurry coat or the C1P coating over the top of that that you could come up against and give it that system there if you wanted something robust and durable. Sandy Shores of uh, Bathrooms have joined us. How you going, guys? Matt, priming for Skyon. Matt, there's the, the best product in our range for that is our Gripset OP. Um, it's fast drying, bonds extremely well with Skyon. It was one of the first products of its kind. There we go. Claire's asked the same question. Non-porous prime on Skyon. And, and Gripset OP does the job every time. And those of you who have used it, it's got fantastic coverage. It's about a litre for 10 square metres. On Skyon, you might want to consider two coats, but as I said, it does go off very quickly, and all our membranes, all of them bond to it very, very well. You can use E60 on non-porous surfaces, but you've got longer to dry. Um, Sky, uh, the Gripset OP is the most common product we use on surfaces like that, on Dinsel, these sorts of non-porous surfaces. Never lets us down, just make sure the surface is nice and clean and it does the job. So hopefully that's answered your questions. Remember guys what we said, if you DM your phone number in, I'll call you for any questions you've got and the best question of the day gets the grips at best. Send out to them at your size, but you've got to ring through. No problem, Matt. Um, Walter, what would you recommend for areas that get to negative temperatures? Uh, great question. Um, look, in that situation there, if it's negative temperatures during application, Presently, there's nothing. And the reason for that, particularly if it's an external substrate, is because you've got the ice, uh, thaw ice situation, where even though it's not visible, you've got retained moisture in the substrate uh, externally. So if we're talking about a, a temperature that's um, sort of minus five outside, let's think of the snow fields in, in Australia this time of year, in Victoria, you can't apply the product to there. If you can, wait to the, to the time of the day when the temperature gets to say zero above then we can apply products like the 2p the 38fc the gc or the new product which we'll be bringing out in october but it really is an important one and it's a really good question walter because uh, you just cannot even though you might not have rain and i've, and I've had this firsthand in new zealand on the south island i was there years ago in queenstown doing a project and um, we had to make a rapid version of the 2P to deal with it, which was very expensive and it worked, but it's a complex, it's, it's a, it becomes a more complex product and it's a specialized. And so we don't really have a demand for it so that we actually had made that product for a project. We've got the facility to make it, but it doesn't come up commonly. But like I said, it's, it, if you can get it down while it's in the ambient conditions or the conditions it needs to be as our data sheet, and if it drops off to negative later during the curing phase, it's just going to prolong the curing. But if we're talking about really, really cold temperatures um, that could get down to minus 5, minus 10, it, it actually is probably best to hold off on that. It, it's, it's no different than when you get guys that are doing a situation with um, the, the hot temperatures like 35, 40 plus on roofs and things fry. We tend to... Um, think to stay away from those situations because the membrane just doesn't set properly and doesn't bond properly. No different with the cold, colder situation. So please remember that because that is a critical one that um, we, we just tend to downplay at the colder temperatures. And look, speaking to a lot of people this year, 
with the cold snaps we've had around the country, call it uh, global changes, the situation there is that you've got, um, yeah, you're just in the, in the hands of the gods really with, with uh, those, those cooler temperatures that was just extreme and, and it impacted um, many people out there which we'd heard from. Um, and we made some changes where we could to accommodate that, but at the end of the day, there's a limitation. Matt has asked us, <laughs> is the new product liquid or sheet? I'm glad you're getting excited, Matt. Um, you have to stay tuned. You're gonna have to stay tuned. I just cannot steal the thunder, because if I do give it away now, you're gonna, yeah. So no, sorry, mate. But Matt, if you can ring through a question, I'm gonna give you this today, okay, if you want. Um, okay, Southern Cross Thailand is joined. How are you going, guys? Uh, Walter, I hope that answered the question on the negative temperatures um, because I'm sure in Melbourne this year many people got handed that. And just on cold temperatures, I might have mentioned this the last time, but the important thing to remember is not just the external temperature, it's the surface temperature. And I've seen situations where you can have temperatures going down at night, uh, like during the day it's been laid down at sort of 10, 7 degrees, but concrete overnight can actually drop down uh, to, to the, the, the temperatures just don't thaw out. So the next day you come in and the temperature gets to sort of starts to creep up to 5, 10 degrees, but the surface temperature could still be zero. Check those data sheets out on those products you're using because that is, that is the critical one that you need to look at. And um, if the surface temperature is not where it needs to be, get that right before you, you get yourself in trouble. And what finished what finished thickness should a membrane be? Um, this question is one, I'm gonna call Matt right now. We've got him, we've got him on, he's king. I'll come back to that question in a moment. Here we go, our maiden, our maiden. Phone call live on Grips at Q&A. Hey mate, how you going? Matt, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, no worries at all. Thanks for calling. That's alright. Matt, far away. You're the first one to ask a question live on the Gripset Q&A show, so great to hear from you. What have you got for me? No worries at all. Um, getting asked more and more lately from builders to do below any... You're cutting out there, mate. Sorry, what was that? So I'm getting asked a lot lately from builders to um, waterproof below end above screed. Yes. Um, just sort of looking for products for priming green screed. Okay, great question. Um, and that is a common one we're seeing now. We get a lot of, so if you haven't heard that, that question was, Matt's ring in and said that he's um, getting more call for uh, waterproofing below and, uh, and above screeds. So look, it makes good sense to do that application. We get a lot of architects that um, request that now and some of the, the, the better builders around, particularly for external applications. The situation with green screeds. So if you've got, um, let's say you're using GC on the base or uh, grip set 38 on the base, you've got a screed gone on top. If you are working externally, um, all of our, our, our grips at GP primer and the grips at E60 obviously and the grips at OP will bond to a green screed. That's not the, that's not the issue, they'll all bond to a green screed. What you've got to be careful of is the retained or the residual moisture in the screed. Now if you're using something like 2P and, and I hope you, everyone else has listened to this, the advantage of grips at 2P on top of the screed, if there's retained moisture in that screed, is that a primer like GP the moisture will actually evaporate through the 2P because 2P is not a vapour barrier like the 38 FC is or like the GC would be if that was on top of the screen. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So you can consider that option. If however you want to go with something like the Gripset 38, if it's internal, like I said, as long as the screed is dry enough to walk on, uh, the Grips at GP will bond to that and the 38 can go on top. You just gotta be certain that you don't retain that moisture in the screed if you've trapped it between two, two vapor barrier membranes. That, that's the piece you wanna be wary of. If it's an external job, 
the risk you run is obviously that blistering phenomena from UV light, sun getting on the membrane, where the moisture is trying to, to come out. And then in that situation, E60 is the, the option you want to go with. Sure. Okay, the, but... Um, the particular application I was um, sort of had in mind for this question was, it was an external application with um, efflorescence being a concern. Yeah, okay, great, good question. So, at the moment, the best option for that then is to go with our grips at E60, because that will block uh, any chance of any moisture coming into the, the tile bed, and it's the moisture from the tile bed often that will create the efflorescence. Okay? Sure. Yeah, right. Um, but, but just on that, just on that point, um, that range we're releasing next month that you inquired about, yeah. There's a product in there that's going to be able to overcome that even further because it's, there's a few products in that range. But I just want to make a point too on efflorescence because it's a good question you bring up and it comes up a lot. Waterproofers get blamed for this sometimes and so do tilers. If you ever got a job, let's say you did a job like that and the E60 was what you put on top of the screed and then a, a year later you got your client complaining about efflorescence, the issue is the moisture through the grout joints and the tile adhesive because you can ensure that your client that there's no rising damp from the mortar bed that's created that efflorescence. Because sometimes efflorescence can actually come from the moisture getting through the tile bed and the reaction between that, the, the tile adhesive and the, and the tile grout, and depending on the quality of the grouts and adhesives they've used. Yeah. And we see this a lot, where tilers get, uh, waterproofs get blamed because of the rising damp from, from the screed, it's got nothing to do with the screed. So this is like, everything's got to work together, a good, a good quality grout, good quality tile adhesive, um, but if you're taking care of that with, with something like the E60, then you, at least you're 100% certain you've got no uh, rising, and no chance of any rising moisture coming through to create the efflorescence. But stay tuned, Matt, because next month there'll be something exciting on the horizon that um, I'm going to give you a sample of to try firsthand, okay? Remind me about that one, I'll give it to you. Yeah, no worries, mate. Thanks, Steve. Okay, thanks, Matt. And stay tuned. You might win this best, the way it's going. Yeah, thanks, mate. See Thank ya. you. Bye. Thanks, Matt. Great question. Really good question. We've got a few other guys that have joined us. Alan Parada's joined us. How you going, guys? And Spoto Kaz. So, I'm hoping that it made sense to everybody, that question. That was a good one about efflorescence because it, it comes up frequently. Um, and we see people, like I said, we see waterproofers get blamed for uh, salt damp and efflorescence into tile beds, and often it's got nothing to do with it. This whole system with design and um, the, pro the other products we use is so critical. Waterproofing is not just one piece of the equation, it's part of a system. And that system is the surface, the substrate that's used, and the finishes. If we don't get that right, then you can bugger it up and um, we keep pointing the finger at different, uh, different people. Which brings me to one of my final points, if no other questions are going to come through to be called. Um, if you want to inquire, we had lots of questions come up last time about training. We've got, and I'm going to post a video uh, shortly with my team of our new training centre that we've built here in Adelaide and at headquarters. And it's part of our national technical centre which we're developing. And we're taking training to a level that no one's taken it before because we're serious about getting this waterproofing piece right with our clients. But the training we hold here is not just for applicators, it's also for designers, architects, builders, and even our resellers. We've got different courses for different groups. However, what we're doing for applicators and those that are serious about waterproofing is introducing our accredited practitioner system. And this is something very new and it's going to keep you ahead of everyone else in the marketplace with what you get for that. I'm not going to go into the details here, but if you would like to know about that, can you please either send us a DM with your details on it or get hold of our email through tech services and you'll get information directly from me about that. We've actually got courses starting this month. We've got a first next week and uh, the week after we've already got people coming from interstate that are going through that and we'll be recording those guys and they'll be able to tell you firsthand how much they've uh, learned and improved with the course and what the accredited practitioner system gives you as a grip set applicator. It is something new, something unique to the market uh, and a lot different than what you would have seen before. So it's an investment in you and your business 
and you get to have the tightest relationship with us as a manufacturer than anyone else in the country will have. And so you'll be part of a, a unique team of people and we're really valuing that. So please um, let me know. Sandy Shores has asked a question. Do you have a preferred or recommended list of tile glue manufacturers for the various membranes? Yes, we do. We do have that. And if you'd like to know uh, the, the various products that we've got approved for that, we have um, tech services that can email that out to you. And just quickly on that, we can tell you right now that most of, most of the manufacturers in the country, we recommend their products over it. It's the grade of adhesive they use for the correct application. That's the important one. Because if they get that wrong, you can have, a, you can have an Ardex or a MAPAE adhesive on our membrane and, and it's compatible and we can warrant it. However, if you're doing an external podium and you're using a, a, um, a general wall adhesive for internal bathrooms and it's not recommended for out, outside, then that's not, the, that's not our recommendation. So it's the grade of adhesive with the membrane, which is probably more important to us than the brand. But we can give you those and make sure that you, you want to run a bias because there's a number of very good adhesive manufacturers in the country and we're more than happy to recommend them and pass them on. We understand that tilers like certain adhesives. And one other question has come through. Also would love a local supply on the Sunshine Coast, Queensland. I will have a email to you or a message to you tomorrow morning guys to confirm that okay give it to you tomorrow morning and you'll have that that detail for you Got another question here someone coming in for aqua armor four five double zero okay so we've got another question live I'm glad someone else is joining Hello, it's Phil from Gripset. Phil, how are you? I'm good, how are you mate? Good, very good. Let the country know who you are, Aqua Armour. Yes. One of the best applicators in Melbourne, I hear. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're using Gripset, you don't have to hope. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> okay, far away, what's your question? Silver good. Silver good, I'm glad. Yeah, see, we live by that. What's your question? Um, what do you got? Um, just regarding what the other guy was saying, so about the, if you waterproof underneath and then you go over the uh, green screen. Yes. All right. Um, with the E60, how long after applicable lock, put an application on, do you have to unlock? How long have you got to waterproof before. over? Okay. Yeah, yeah, look, good, good question. Um, look, the fact is, uh, once the E60 dries, which is normally goes through a four to six hour cycle, uh, you can waterproof over that. However, I think what you're alluding to, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is there's a lot of question now in the marketplace that if an epoxy's left for a while, how long before you can get over the top of it? Is that, is that where you're going with that? Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And we see that a lot. Um, so, when you've got an epoxy um, primer, what happens with the curing process? It goes harder over time because that's it's the hardness of the coating that actually gives the resistance to the hydrostatic or the rising damp. Yep. So where products that actually have a limited um, situation with that are more the cement based products like self levelers and tile adhesives mm -hmm. because if the primer goes too hard you don't get good adhesion with those sorts of products on top. With something like the Gripset 38 or the GC you have no issue because the type of adhesive or the flexible coating will bond to it. Okay. However, um, I would make the suggestion that you, if you've got the epoxy that has been exposed out there for more than the E60, say, and this is more for outside, more for five to seven days, it's probably worthwhile giving it a clean and just give it a, a one top coat over the top of it. Um, but you shouldn't really need to because you'll find that normally you'd, you'd put that down and then you. you those sorts of primers are used because they want to stop that moisture coming through. It's not the sort of product you'll put out there and wait a week, otherwise you might as well wait for that moisture to escape before you put that primer down, if you know what I mean. So yeah, it's normally exactly. scheduled. But let's say you know you had to do a job and you, you got called out or you got locked out the site and you couldn't get to it. Um, with products like our 38, our P39, the GC and its, it's adhesive, you're not really running the risk of the adhesion issues you'd have when you speak to flooring guys they might put self-levelers on top. Yep. Okay, I hope that answered that question. 
Yeah, well, um, another thing, well, because what I've, what I've done is because I had a balcony that I was, was about uh, 30 squares, 30, 40 squares. Right. And um, I put the 860 over it and I went out went to another job. So I was back in around maybe four, four and a half hours. It was still, it still had like those wet, um, like some spots were wet, and it was still wet. Yeah. You know? So I left it for another two hours, and that's when it just started like curing. Those spots started curing. So it was about six, seven hours all up. You know. Yeah. So look, I mean, like, what, I, what I said before, then the question came through from Walter about cold temperatures. Um, yeah. The situation is that you'll always get a guide in our data sheet on the curing process. But if you've got a, a, a damp substrate or you've got cold temperatures, you need to look that it will work outside that. But the thing that you pointed out there, which is really good sense, and I hope the others have heard this, is that by just checking that those damp spots got dry before you go and start rolling membrane out, which I've seen before, is good sense. And, and, and you can always tell between the, the look of the wet to the dry. Um, yep. And you know, when I, when I was out training in the past, I always would tell guys to have a clean chuck swipe or a clean kitchen wipe. And if you're ever in doubt, sort of just give it a, squeeze it out, but if it's damp, and just give it a, a, a very light coat or wipe over the surface. Mm -hmm. And if you go no residue coming up, then you know that the, that the surface is ready to go. Okay, beautiful. beautiful. But no, good question. Beautiful. Good luck and thanks for um, calling in and really appreciate your business. Thank you very much. Okay, Thanks. see you, bye. Thank you, bye. Good question there from Aquahama. So, um, yes, we might wrap this up in a moment. So, as I said, training, if you'd like to know about the accredited practitioner system we've got, get those messages through to us through DM or email or even phone if need be, and we'll help you with that. And from our first live session, I know my producer over there is going to get angry with me. I said I'm going to give away one of these vests, but I'm going to give one of a vest, a vest away to both Matt and Aqua Armour because you're the only two guys that have the balls to ring up. Thanks guys, alright, really appreciate you calling. So I'm going to get you to message through what your size is and we'll get these out to you very, very shortly, okay? For everyone else who joined this live session, thank you very much. Love to have you on board, I hope we answered your questions. If not, we'll do another one, another one of these soon. Look forward to it then. Bye.